Good morning. Another bright video for you today. Be sure to follow me on YouTube and here as well. So, um, it's been really rough. I've had a lot of issues with my car and it's made things really hard. I've been really just struggling mentally. Uh, I've got a lot of financial stress, but I still made sure to get out there and do some things. It was great distraction. So here's my walk from the June 3rd. Right before this, a um, <laughs> I've forgotten what they're called. Uh, a woodchuck ran and burrowed himself under a little spot into my house. So that's a problem. But as you can see, everything is really green. Everything is really grown in. It is just atrocious to move through here. Um, all of this Japanese knotweed has really taken a shine to the land. Um, I don't usually, I haven't worked this, this space at all so you can get a better look at how things just grow in. It's a lot it's a real mess, and it's kind of a problem. That was a stick hitting the camera. Uh, things that I still need to work on. But that's okay. Let me just get through this space. I really still don't know what to do here. It's just a lot of work and a lot of space. And I'm not quite sure what the best use of this land is. So I'm kind of just pushing through, making sure that all the work that I've done previously doesn't get, you know, lost. But it's a lot. It's not great, but here we are. <sighs> this is so overgrown. I absolutely got poison ivy on my ankle, and because I was taking care of some of it, got on my hands, got on the back of my ear. It's such a pain. So, coming through this um, elderberry bush here is doing quite well. And I don't want to break it, so I do everything I can to move around it. Um, this space is all grown in, underneath is all swamp. So, it's a mess to really uh, push through. I absolutely bonk my head there. And yeah, I'm just doing my best to power through. This is super mucky, even though there's so much foliage, which is weird. Um, but I'm just upset ultimately at this point with how much everything's grown in on the path and how invisible the path is. So it made it really easy for my um, decision to clear a lot of this. So 
I did spend a good while this week clearing, and I got a lot done. It was just a lot, and it's a shame the forest ambience doesn't come in on this at all. But oh. you'd think I'd clear some of these like low hanging branches so I don't bonk my head as much. But I haven't. It's just another way to stay humble, I guess. <laughs> but you can see there's a ton of poison oak all over the place. But and the the path is nearly invisible now. You can barely see that there's some trotting. There are a ton of deer tracks though, so that makes me really hopeful. I'm really glad that the animals are using the space and that my work isn't completely lost on nature because in the end I'm doing it for me and nature. There's really no one else who's getting to enjoy this. Except for you all. I mean, anyone who watches this gets a little escape and a walk through the woods. Even after I'm gone and places changed completely, there'll be some record of how this looked when I was getting work done. It's, it'd be really interesting to get in touch of, with a, someone, a forester or some kind of botanist to really like get an idea of if there's any other invasive species I should be taking out, if there's a better way to do what I'm trying to do, if there's a better means to getting a creek to work effectively for the land more than it, anything else. Really, I'm just in a weird spot with this project, <laughs> but I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to try to at least get one video out every two weeks, and it pushes me to get out there more, and do more, and just be active. There's a lot of times where I'm just in a funk, feeling depressed. And my blood sugar will spike because I haven't been doing anything. And I've been sad and snacking. And it's amazing how a walk will take care of a lot of that. And I'll find a lot to do. And it gives really good feelings of accomplishment. Especially knowing that I'm helping the land and making a space better. I am not a fan of this entire loop. <laughs> it is such a pain. There's so much work that needs to get done. This is a total briar patch. Like, all of these have thorns and will absolutely tear you up. It's rough. But, for the sake of continuity, I'll come back here and take this alternate path back. There's a railroad tie under there. I was going to try to flip it to start flattening out the space, but it's stuck. It's just in there. Uh, so also trying to remember to grab any 
um, grapevine and stop that from getting even worse because this is all over here. That's grapevine, 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 all this grapevine. Like it's really a problem when it gets going. So it's just better for me to really just kind of make sure I get through and, you know. So I actually go the path back, which is a mess and I need to actually clean up. But, yep, that is a thing for when I have gloves usually. But I did not have gloves on this walk because this was a depression walk. branch <laughs> had to come down because it had broken so I'm just kind of can't remember if I deposited it off to the side or if I'm carrying it with me I think I'm depositing it hard to say I think that's a plane going overhead. How weird that that comes through, but the polywogs and the frogs and everything don't. Oh well. I've also realized when I am carrying something, my posture improves dramatically as per these uh, videos. My head comes back and I'm just like, upward and outward but yeah like some of the time my work involves just picking up a stick and hitting some dead branches to see if they go sometimes they do bop. Bop, bop, bop. <sighs> it's amazing how little the average person jumps but how much the average person jumps in a video game. Like, just given nothing and nothing to do, the average person will, you know, do a little jump here and there. But in their average life, very little jumping. It's something that I try to be more aware of. I don't know how, like, actively good jumping is for you, but it seems like a thing that our bodies are meant to do. So we should probably be doing it more, probably be using those muscles and like actively doing the things that our bodies are supposed to do. But because we do it so little, the muscles and the everything involved get really weak. So it's a shame we don't jump more because... You can only imagine what your legs would look like if you jumped as much as the characters you play in games. Like, so much of it, just like hopping along, being a little silly guy. <sighs> really happy with the way these exits have turned out. It's really helpful to be able to just like pop out, drop off stuff to get moved to a burning pile and pop right back in. So I've taken a detour here just to kind of like show a little bit more of the land because there's a ton to see that I don't show off. So I just try to work my way around. And I think here I'm deciding, like, we're taking a really big detour to go out and around to the pond. Yep. Because there's this whole pond I cleared out and made accessible. Like, it's really a nice little place. Uh, it absolutely had its snapping turtle at one point. I absolutely watched it lay eggs, and I hope that the 
the baby survived. Um, there is a couple of ducks that are that have bred and you know done the whole life cycle thing. So it, this pond is really nice. I'm really happy that it exists and it's supporting life. So many little frogs and toads. <sighs> but I see a lot of animals and not many people probably do in their daily life. Like on average, I'll see at least deer tracks, squirrels, chipmunks, rabbits, birds, um, occasionally a fox, occasionally a woodchuck, occasionally a possum or a skunk. And even rarer, a coyote. Bonk. <laughs> it's so weird that the simple act of wearing a hat reduces my uh, viewpoint so much. But this is completely different space than I've gone through before. Because so little has changed in that other space, I'm just walking through here to give a completely different aspect of the work I've done. So just kind of cutting back in, because it's not that big of a problem to do. And then we can come back through into the same kind of walking pattern that I've done before. But I do have to drop this stick off at some point. So I guess I decide to drop it off at this uh, fire pit here. Yeah. Because I've got all of that <laughs> that I've been carrying the entire time. And that's a lot of my workout is just like grabbing a tree or sticks and just moving it back to a spot where it can exist. <sighs> so summer in full effect, everything fully grown out. The um, daffodils are long since done, but they're little, uh, I, their fronds make a really neat like they work really well for some crafting so i decide while i'm on my walk back i'm going to make a little bit of cordage just for funsies just to like remember how to do it because i believe i was watching no i'd come back from the uh the event where I watched a bow making class or a bow string making class. And part of it is using that cordage skill. So I wanted to make sure I still had that and had the memory to do it. So it involves taking two fronds, kind of looping them over each other and then twisting out and then flicking the other piece up and then doing that consistently. So that's what I'm doing while I'm kind of walking through here. And I'm taking my long way around, so I make sure I get it mostly done. But we also got to stop in and a look at the bones. Um, I recently actually harvested the fox, and this is how the skull came out. It turned out quite nice. I'm really happy with it. So, huh. but, the teeth actually fall out quite easily, so it's a thing that happens. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that's fun. I'm glad that happened and got that all taken care of. Ah, so yeah, that's how that's looking, and that's the cordage I made.
So and that's it for this one. And that's the woodchuck I was referencing. <laughs> you can just barely like it just like snuck in behind this siding that isn't fully on yet. <sighs> okay. So I'm going to flip over to the other video about 10 days later. All right. 10 days later, <laughs> I got really aggressive in fighting the Japanese knotweed and just went whole hog ham and just absolutely obliterated this area. Uh, just me and my little hand scythe. <laughs> it's a lot of work, and I'm really glad that I got it done. At the end of this video, I actually uh, show off a little bit of what that involves. But as you can see from the last one, I've done a ton of clearing. So... <laughs> This is actually much more passable. This fell, which, uh, <laughs> lucky no one was in or around that area when it happened. But I'm glad I was able to get it all the way down so it wasn't a hazard. <clears throat> but absolutely cleared through a lot of this space. The frogs are very active, so you see me glance over at the water, that's why. Because I'm a big fan of them. They're, they're a little boost of serotonin. So, um, I don't know why I took this path over. Because I think I thought I did more clearing on this side, because I did. But it kind of misses an aspect of me clearing the uh what was stopping me from going through the other times like there's a couple of branches and things so i have to kind of double back here even though this isn't cleared at all like i kind of realized at this moment like oh right i cleared over here a little bit and up through here these branches are gone so oh well <laughs> So, moving on, uh, this got cut up a bit, so it's noticeably shorter, but I'm sure that'll change in the next 10 days. <sighs> so, just kind of pushing through kind of the same spaces, uh, work through this space a little bit and tried to get a lot of the debris and stuff that I put off to the side out and actually away so it's not just a pile of debris. Opened this up a little bit more to make it more accessible. Um, this path is still rough, but it has a little bit better aspects now, a little bit cleaner. I'm attempting to use the uh, the trimmings here to firm up the ground. As you can see, it's a little more cut through here. It gives me a more defined path over to here. But from here on, I th think it's going to be less cut. Yeah, I don't think I got very far past that point. That rose bush bloomed, which is really neat and smells amazing. Like, it's really wonderful when a bloomed flower comes into its own and just like creates an aromatic experience as you're walking through a place. So good. So, uh, this branch fell, which. Um, as you can see is quite large but so I've gotten it off of its uh, base here but it's just really stuck like 
That's another piece of it that can just get moved off to the side. And so trying to get this out will likely require the saw at this point. But I want to try to at least like push it out and away. Kind of hoping it would crack, but it didn't. It doesn't have enough counterforce. So I have to abandon that and move on. And kind of just work my way back to my little path. Bonk. Alright. I'm fine. I'm good. It's just <laughs> amazing. I, I'm, I'm not a hat person. I don't know how people can wear them. I, I need my... It's not periphery. I guess it's still the periphery of my vision, but from the top. Usually I think of peripheral vision off to the side. <clears throat> mm, pardon. <sighs> so. Ugh. Just a lot of fallen branches. I don't know what or why they've uh, come into view so so much but uh, there they are and it's it feels like a good thing to get them down and out <clears throat> so I do <clears throat> <clears throat> so yeah I've got more and more of this this space is so overgrown it's so wild i just have no words for like those clearly defined paths and i think even just like one or two videos back are almost completely disappeared and i'm kind of moving through this space based on muscle memory and uh, feel <laughs> Like, I can kind of see that there's an open lane here. It's not incredibly open, but it exists. So it's interesting to actually, like, get out and go through it. Um, I'm really not sure what to do with this space either. Like, the further I get back into this, like, little creekside area... I don't know. Like, <laughs> if I if I could have it my way and have like full round uh, round the year stuff that I wouldn't have to cart out of here, I would absolutely set up a little like swing, like a lawn swing, like with. Kind of like a couch style, if that makes sense. And just have like little rest slash relax areas. Um, so this is more on that space. I've I believe I ran into some more, like, just branches that needed to come down and out. But it's a late evening day. These are... It, it's kind of hard to explain just the pure size and scope of some of these branches. But because they're dead, and, like, it's... Like, some of these are 12 foot long, and it's just, like, not a problem to pick them up and get them out of the way. And the more you do it, the stronger you get, so that's why my arms look the way they do. <laughs> but it's, I'm really happy that 
being able to just like pop out, drop off some of the wood, and then I can just do a whole load and pick that up and take it over. Even if I can only move it to the next checkpoint, it gets easier and easier to get it all the way up. So I'm just working my way through. I've got this whole section again. It's still just as bad. You can even see some of the growth of the uh, prickers and general things that want to scratch the heck out of you. But pressing onward. <laughs> like as it's hard. I do want some of the thorny bushes and things to exist. Like it's inevitable that it will. But beyond that, it's just a lot. And I don't want to completely ruin the habitat or uh, lifestyle of animals who use those kinds of bushes to survive, like rabbits and things. But at the same time, I want a good walking experience. So it's always rough to balance like just how wild to have this space versus how much I pointed out that that was the path that I should be taking and I did last time but it's just it's easy to not work back here <laughs> if that makes sense like a 10 minute like severe walk and then working a space happens and I do it but like a lot of the time I forget that I do these walks and that there's spaces that need help so oftentimes I'll do one of these videos and then go out and work a space it's not happening today, but uh, maybe later, but I absolutely have to wait to hear for, about my car, and from there, do more car repair things. Um, so, like, <laughs> when I'm doing these walks, I'm trying to, like, make checkpoints, like, hey, Come through here and just like knock all that shit out. Um, I did actually come through here and eliminate a lot of the debris because I ran into it one time. Uh, but some of it's having the right tool for the job. Like, I've been doing a lot with the uh, loppers, but there are a few things I'll need the actual saw for. Uh, my last couple of runs through here, I've just had the hand scythe, so that can do even less than the loppers. So sometimes I just don't have the right tool on me. And unlike video games, it doesn't make sense to carry more than one tool usually. Like just the encumbrance of having a second tool is a lot. And then you lose the space to carry and like move stuff because then you'll have to just like drop stuff on the ground. Uh, <laughs> it does come through, but this is actually a very large log that I'm gonna carry all the way back. Uh, you'll get a good look at it, but it's it's cumbersome and it's you know a two-handed job and it's something I would have to look at and be like I have to get that later if I'm carrying a tool because as much as like having things on a belt or a backpack could you know be an idea 
a lot of the stuff I work with is very sharp and very problematic if I fall, and I fall a lot. So if it's in my hands, I can like do proper procedure to make sure it falls away from me or hell even like gets thrown if it's the hand scythe specifically um most of the time though um i can carry stuff with the hand scythe because of the hook i can just like have a whole bunch of things in the hook spot and that helps carry um Hopping out here to this other clearing. Um, but yeah, that's the branch. It is approximately 9, 10 feet long. You know, yay thick. <laughs> so, yep, this is just more of the same space. But lots of big changes in the. 10 days that this was filmed from the previous. So I was really happy to get out and show just how different things are. And I think I wanted to like doubly highlight because I went that way, like come back through this way that this is cleared through. So you can make this hop but then this part needs more work <laughs> that I didn't realize. But this hop is cool, works to there. This is all cleared down. That's the giant thing of poison oak. Oh. So a lot of the time I'm coming through and I see that and they have the hand scythe or a different tool. I'll just like cut it so that it can't progress further up. Like, it's great to be able to just kill it, even though the oils and whatnot that people are allergic to are still on it. It does get rid of a lot of the, like it makes it so there can't be more. So I decided to grab a armful of the Japanese knot root, which I have been like absolutely destroying, but there's just so much. So I get that, and I'm actually going to bring you up and around, grab my hand scythe, and take care of some, because I was really in the mood to get that done today, or that day. So I'm just going to pop up, uphill. This pile is huge, regardless of like what it looks like. But this is my little space. That's the bones I've got drying. Disc golf discs. Hand scythe. Not sure how this is gonna look, but this is how the space is now. You can kind of get a picture of how things are. Like just completely overrun. And then just like general hacking motions, trying to like get lower if possible. That lovely like shing noise is it touching the um, the concrete here on the side of this uh, bit. So I'm just kind of working through getting this stuff out and away. Breathing is very important when you're doing physical activity in labor. These um, Japanese knotweed, for those who don't have it around them, you're lucky, um, but it is a hollow stalk that never hardens. It does fill with water and the root structure is woody and is very deep and sprouts a lot more of these uh, bamboo-like structures that get them their chlorophyll and nutrients and whatnot. But 
They're excessively invasive. It's really bad for the area. It's not good. They don't have any uh, local predators. So it just grows completely out of control. Just gross. Awful. Hate it so much. It's the worst. Because it just takes over an area. Like, as you can kind of see, like, if you go back and, like, get an idea of some of these, this space and what it looks like before, and even after I'm done here, just a little bit of work, you get kind of a view of just how much that this space uh, was uh, conquered by this plant and probably only one or two uh, root structures. So it's getting better. A lot of the debris is just on the ground though. So it's kind of hard to see without the um, full perspective because looking down you're seeing a lot of the same stuff anyway. One of my favorite aspects of the hand scythe is being able to just like slide everything right up against the edge of something that you don't want to hit. Because with um, a weed whacker or something, if it oftentimes you'll break the blade or the uh, whatever bit that you're using that's doing the cutting. But yeah, like just very happy to get all of this out and away. So the thing you'll notice is I take those weeds and toss them down into the valley there. That's intentional. I want that like natural weed to spread in areas where it's just muddy and gross, hopefully to like give the natural land some roots to hold it in especially in the little floodplain I've got there. So this used to be a greenhouse. That's what this structure was. Um, of course, I inherit it and it's broken and doesn't work and has nothing going for it. But, you know, <laughs> it is impressive how accurate that is to uh, real life that Oftentimes you'll inherit the broken thing and have to maybe fix it up, maybe use it as is, but yeah, I just wanted to like show off a little bit of when the, the muse strikes for clearing a space, the hand scythe, super easy to clean off. Oh, I made a note that um, if I could just go back like a little bit, I point out this right here, this branch had a baby bird, well, a, a bird nest with eggs and a very recently hatched chick. And I felt atrocious when I knocked it down. I didn't know it just looked like a woodpecker hole so I didn't even see it didn't have it didn't register at all that this could be a nest so when I was picking up stuff to get put on the fire I noticed I was just like hey what what's going on with this what it's so hollow there's sticks inside so I take a peek inside realize the error and then put that back up in that space and lo and behold the mother was able to come back and take care of the chicks and it was a really nice little story worked out really well but I just wanted to highlight on that so thank you all for watching um, be sure to follow my uh, twitch where I do these live and I just like the way that twitch encodes it for YouTube so that's twitch.tv slash Kenku. And it's getting uploaded to YouTube, where it's youtube.com slash c slash Kenku. 
and that's where these get uploaded. Thank you, eh, thank you so much for watching. Stay wild. And until next time, be well. Take a walk. Do what you can for your mental health. Because it's hard out there. And I hope these videos at least do something positive for me, nature, you, or just my sense of self. <laughs> so, till then, be well.